Hello, my name is Gretchen Pro, and I've been challenging since set 2. After Day of the Draven meta, patch 13.13b has come out, and a meta has begun to develop as players are figuring out how to play the best compositions this patch. What I'd like to cover today is my tier list for the current compositions in the current patch, as well as how to play the best compositions right now. I won't be covering the best legends in this video, as I will be releasing a video within 24 hours of this uploading covering that, so if you are interested in that, make sure to subscribe and keep tuned for that. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is go over my current composition tier list. I did order the S tier, but didn't order the other tiers. Uh, the reasoning for that is different comps are going to have different strengths based off of how much you hit for the composition, like what augments you have. So I don't think having an exact ordering for the compositions outside of S tier makes that much sense, uh, just because they're going to vary in power quite a bit. But starting off in S tier, we have a Zero Plus Lux, the best comp in the game, the most contested composition in the game, carrying a Zero Plus Lux. I'm going to talk about that later. Ionia Kaisa Plus Yasuo, second best composition in the game, dual carrying Kaisa Plus Yasuo, just really powerful. Same thing with Challenger Kaisa Plus Yasuo, they're kind of similar versions of the composition. Second most contested comp in the game, I'll be talking about that today. Noxus Darius is definitely the best reroll composition, playing around Darius Plus Katarina Carey, I will be talking about it later. Callista Flex, I talked about it in my last video, so if you want to see how to play that, check that out. Uh, playing around Callista, plus like Kaisa and Yasuo and Urgot uh, and the like, just running like a Rageblade Callista in the mid game allows you to tempo into a nice top four. Gwen Azir Flex is another variation if you're carrying Azir and want another AP carry that isn't Lux. I talked about it in my last video, so check that out if you want to see it. Sorcerer Lux is really good if you can get to like six Sorcerer. Velkaz is also really strong with it. Uh, so I will be talking about that today. Rek'Sai reroll, Rek'Sai 3 is a monster and is really good. So again, I will be talking about that today as well. Katarina reroll is very similar to the Darius reroll, so I won't be talking about it. But if you want to see how to play around like that Noxus reroll, just kind of do the same thing as the Darius thing, except prioritize the Katarina items. There's another variation where you go like four strategist. If you want to see that, you can go check out my first comps video for the set. Double Trouble to Leah is a really strong composition. I think that's the best composition if you have the Double Trouble Augment. I'll be talking about how to play that today. Tristana Reroll, I talked about in my last comp video. It's still pretty good, even though it got nerfed. It's definitely the best one-cost reroll in the game right now. Can definitely still win games, can definitely still top four. Kled Reroll, really, really powerful. You get to that Kled 4, he starts decimating teams. He just starts killing stuff really quickly. He's quite tanky. I will be talking about that today. And then Ionia Karma plus Yasuo is another variation of the Ionia build where you carry Karma instead of Kaisa, uh, which allows you to have a stronger mid game, and then you could potentially cap out with a Karma 3 really well. Again, I'll be talking about that today as well. In the A- tier, I won't be talking about all the, uh, any of these comps except for one of them. I will be talking about Shadow Isles Gwen, uh, just due to the fact that it's new on my tier list. The rest of these builds I talked about in my previous two videos, so if you're interested in one of those, check out those videos. Uh, Invoker Karma is pretty good. I think Karma 3 is really strong. I do think the Ionia version is a bit better though. Warwick Callista, where you reroll Warwick and Callista is pretty solid. I think Callista Flex is a bit of the better variation though, unless you have Ravenous Hunter, then going for like Warwick reroll is really, really powerful. Viego reroll is quite good if you have a lot of Viegos early, really strong. Uh, so if I'm sitting here with like six or seven Viegos at Krugs, I'll definitely just roll for Viego 3 and then start putting in Rogues and Shadow Owl units and start pushing levels. Zed reroll is pretty good. It's quite similar to Kled reroll, but I do think prioritizing Kled is a bit better than prioritizing Zed, uh, but it's strong, very similar comp as well. Velka Sona reroll is really good, actually. Uh, thing with Velka Sona is the four multicaster version got nerfed quite a bit because Sona got nerfed. I, whenever I like to play Velka's reroll, I typically prefer to play like the Sorcerer variation, which I will talk about when I talk about Sorcerer Lux. Uh, so if you are interested in playing around Velkos reroll, I recommend playing the Sorcerer version right now. That being said, the 4 Multicaster version is definitely viable. Shadow Isles Gwen is a pretty solid composition. It's a pretty good out to get some top 4s if you want to carry a Gwen and you have like 4 Shadow Isles early. I'll be talking about that today. Echo reroll is nerfed from the last patch, but Echo reroll is still pretty solid. Uh, it's generally not the preferred way to play because usually people are going for like Ezreal instead of Twisted Fate right now. Uh, but can definitely still do pretty well. It still has pretty good stats in the data. 8 Void Kaisa is pretty good if you can tempo into it. If you can cap around a Belveth 2, it's extremely powerful. But if you can't play it from like a strong spot, it's going to be pretty weak. Teemo reroll is pretty strong, especially if you have something like too healthy. Uh, you can go for Teemo 3 with 4 Multicaster or Teemo 4 with 3 Yordle. Uh, both are pretty strong and you can definitely get some top 4s with that. Shreema Azir is not bad. Uh, Azir in general is just doing really well this patch. Uh, but the one thing with Streamer Azir is I think Azir plus Lux is just a better composition. Uh, so I recommend going more towards the Azir plus Lux. Aphelios plus Urgot Deadeye is actually okay. It's not the greatest, uh, but the four Deadeye can actually just one-tap units and kill boards. And so what ends up happening when you're playing Aphelios Urgot 
is you can beat all the low rolling Azir Lux and Ionia players and maybe just sneak in a top four. In the B tier, these compositions aren't the greatest. I think the S and A tier comps are all great. The A minus tier comps are all solid. The B and C tier comps, I wouldn't re really recommend playing that much. But if you have a good spot for them, uh, the B tier comps are definitely something to consider. Demacia Lux, again, just going to be worse than the Sorcerer and the Azir Lux variations. Jin, I really reroll. It's really hard to hit these units. People are holding them in the early game. You're better off just pushing levels and playing one of the other Ionia comps. Kale reroll. Did get a buff, but I haven't really seen it in my games right now. Uh, so I'm hesitant to move it up. That being said, if maybe it is secretly good and should be me in like A tier, not entirely sure. Uh, Zeri got gutted pretty hard. She's not great. If you have early Piltover, it actually can still be quite good, uh, but you need to high roll the composition quite hard. If you have something like Virulent Plague, or you can get to like a 6 Zon with the Exploding Zon mod on like a Jarvan, still really powerful. You get like a 50 stack T-Hex, it's still good. Uh, but in general, it's just going to be a lot less safe of an option, and you need to high roll it pretty hard to do well. Freljord Aphilios, not quite as good as the four Deadeye. You don't have quite as much damage coming out. Aphilios did get nerfed, so I don't think it's as good. Garen Rule got hurt pretty hard, so it's definitely not as strong this patch. It was already kind of on the downswing last patch anyways, uh, just because people were tempoing better and it was struggling to hit the Garen. Now it's just not very good. And again, Zeri already talked about. C tier, just don't recommend playing built different in this patch. It got gutted definitely farther than it needed to. Not very good. And then Poppy Talia is just worse than the Double Trouble Talia version. And Invoker Soraka is just not great. If you want to play Invokers, I would recommend playing around Karma. The first comp I'd like to talk about is probably the best comp in the game, and that is Azir plus Lux. Now, the idea of Azir plus Lux is they're both really strong AP carries, so you play this when you have AP items, and Azir plus Lux are going to be able to burst down targets really quickly. The synergies actually match up quite nicely. Nasus and Garen both have Juggernaut. Uh, so the synergies work out quite nicely as well. Swain works well with Azir because they're both strategists. Jarvan works well with Azir because he's also strategist. So the synergies just work out really well. Azir plus Lux are also really good at bursting down a single target together. They both have a lot of strong single target damage. So as long as you have them on the same side, they're going to be able to burn through enemy teams quite quickly. This is why I highly recommend putting your Azir and your Lux next to each other because they're going to be able to kill things a lot quicker than if they were on opposite sides. Now, in terms of itemization for this composition, you're first going to prioritize Azir items. Azir items, Rageblade is really good, Shiv is really good, Gunblade is good, Deathcap is good, Archangels is good, Jewel Gauntlet is good, Hand of Justice is okay, Guardbreaker is okay as well, uh, Giant Slayer is strong as well, and even Rapid Fire Cannon is a good option too. A thing with Azir itemization is it doesn't matter too much what you have. Rageblade is probably his best singular item, but honestly, you don't need a Rageblade. You want probably some source of attack speed. But that could be like a Shiv, a Giant Slayer. It doesn't necessarily have to be a full Rage Blade itself. He ends up doing a lot of damage anyways with like three, four Strategist and AP items. So if you have like an Archangels, that's going to scale him quite well. I really like healing on my Azir. I think Gunblade is really good. And then you really want Magic Shred. He's going to be a really good Shiv Holder because he's going to get an attack speed buff off of the Sharima. So he's a really good Shiv Holder in this composition. Uh, but of course, if you have a Spark, you may not want to build a Shiv. And you just go three other items on your Azir as well. Next, you're going to prioritize Lux items. You want to have two items on your Lux. That way she gets the Demacia buff. Uh, she's just going to like strong AP items. Jewel Gauntlet is good. Gunblade is good. Shoujin is very good on her after the buff. Blue buff is pretty good, but probably a bit worse than Shoujin. Giant Slayer is very good. Guardbreaker is very good as well. Archangels is solid, but the thing with Lux is, as opposed to Azir, she has a lot of her damage at the start of the fight. Uh, so Archangels is a bit worse on Lux than Azir. I'd rather have the Archangels on him. Hand of Justice is okay on her, but I think it's a bit better on Azir. So she just likes those generic AP items. And then Jarvan's going to be holding your tank items typically. You can put your tank items on Nasus instead, but Jarvan really likes Vow as his best item. If you don't have a Shiv, you want to put Spark on him. He's going to jump into the whole enemy team and Spark them down. Again, make sure that you have your Spark on the same side as your carries. And then any other generic tank item is going to be good on Jarvan as well. Stuff like Warmog, Stoneplate, Bramble Vest, Dragon's Claw, all that stuff is going to be good on him as well. Again, those items can go on Nasus if you hit a Nasus 2 before a Jarvan 2. And then you can, of course, put those items on Swain during the mid game uh, to help stabilize him. The thing with this composition is you generally want to be rolling on level 7. You could theoretically fast 8 for this composition and go for Azir 2 Lux 2 at that point, but it's pretty contested right now, so you generally want to be rolling on level 7 at least till you get 1 Azir, 1 Lux, and 1 Jarvan, just because they're hard units to find. That being said, if you are uncontested, you can feel free to fast 8 and play right there. When you're playing this composition, what you'll a lot of times end up playing is a board that looks something like this. Here we have Team Otalia along with Lux Azir, and then we have Jarvan, Garen, Swain, and Nasus. This enables four strategists, which is going to give us a good amount of frontline and a lot of damage. This is a pretty easy board to hit because Talia Teemo are quite easy units to hit, so you can hold these during the mid-game uh, and transition into a board something like this. And then once it comes late game, you can transition out of the Talia and Teemo and into Shen plus Cassante. 
Uh, this board's going to be pretty good once you get to like a Z or two Lux two, because you're not really going to be lacking the damage. Uh, whereas if you're like on a Z or one Lux one, you may want the extra damage from the four strategist. Uh, and this just enables you to play better units because of course, Cassante and Shen are better units than Talia and Timo. Typically, you want to be making sure that your Sherma buff goes onto the Azir and not the Nasus. In some situations, I actually do like the Sherma buff going on the Nasus. For instance, if you have a setup like this and you have a bunch of tank items on the Nasus uh, and you're kind of lacking frontline, your frontline's not that upgraded, you may want Sherma to go onto the Nasus instead of the Azir. But generally, you want the Sherma, uh, Sherma buff to be going onto the Azir. There's a bunch of good augments for this composition. Generic AP augments are going to be your best bet. Uh, just really powerful for this composition. In addition, I think Tactical Superiority is really good as well. It's just free AP for your Zero Unlocks and then also gives you two Strategist units so it enables you to be a lot stronger in the mid game. Should be giving you like Teemo plus Swain, I believe. So that enables you to have a stronger mid game board. Another one is Shreema's Legacy is very good at 2-1. Uh, I think Shreema's Legacy is quite good because it gives you a Talia, a Cassiopeia, and a Renekton, which allows you to have a really strong 3 Shreema early game board. Uh, so Shreema's Legacy, great to take it 2-1 and pretty good into this composition as well because you're fitting in the 3 Shreema. In terms of the best Legends for this composition, we want Legends that enable our multi-carries. So Ezreal and Ornn are going to be really good, give us more items. And interesting to that, I think Vladimir is quite good as well, uh, just due to the fact that Azir really likes to scale late into those fights. So having Transfusion to allow the fights to scale a bit longer is good. And then Ascension is also really good with Azir because, again, scaling champions tend to like Ascension. And Battle Ready is just a good augment as well. I think Vagar is also pretty good. I think that Jeweled Lotus is pretty good in this dual carry setup right here. Tiny Power is also pretty good for them, buff up their damage. Uh, so those are the best legends for this composition. The next composition I'd like to talk about is probably the second best composition in the game. And this is going to be 6 Ionia Yasuo plus Kaisa carry. Uh, the idea of this is we just fit in 6 Ionia. For Challenger, and that's your board right here. Ari can be dropped for any Ionia unit before you hit her, and the rest of the units should be pretty easy to hit. Again, Yasuo and Kaisa are pretty contested right now, so a lot of times you want to roll on level 7 for this board to at least hit one of each, then you can go level 8. Uh, but if you can manage to make it to level 8 uncontested, you can roll then as well for this composition. In terms of itemization, we're first going to want to prioritize our Yasuo items. I personally really like healing plus 2 on my Yasuo. Even though Yasuo gets healing from the Ionia bonus, I really like to just have healing on him anyways, just because you want to be him to be able to heal to full every time he ults, because he's going to be running into the enemy team and taking a lot of damage. In terms of the plus two that I really like, I really like Infinity Edge, I really like Titans, Edge of Knights really, really strong, Deathblade's strong as well. Quicksilver is okay, although I don't love it. And then as for your healing item, Bloodthirster is the best, but Hand of Justice is good as well. You can even go like Bloodthirster plus Hand of Justice plus like an Infinity Edge. That's a viable build as well. Next, you're going to want to prioritize Kaisa items. She's just going to want generic AP items. She really wants one healing item, so either a Gunblade or a Hand of Justice is going to be best. And then she wants typically two damage items. Deathcap is good, Giant Slayer is good, Guard Breaker is good. Morello is pretty good as well. Shiv is good as well. I don't love Archangels in this build just due to the fact that your fights are a bit quicker with the Fort Challenger. Archangels is a really good Kaisa item if you're playing like a stallier version, but in this board, I don't love Archangels on the Kaisa. And then you're going to put any tank items that you have on your Shen. So just any generic tank items going to be going on your Shen in this board. Uh, one important thing to note is that Ionia Emblem is really strong in this composition. Uh, if you're playing this board right here, what you can simply do is just put Ionia on your Kaisa. And now, of course, we're playing 7 Ionia, so we can simply just drop a unit. Usually it'll be just be the Ari until you hit it. And then, you know, you'll play something over the Karma once you hit the Ari. So once you hit Ari, you typically just drop Karma for any unit. Uh, this is typically going to be just any generic legendary unit. I actually think Aatrox is quite good with Yasuo. Aatrox and Yasuo have pretty good synergy. If you put the Aatrox next to the Yasuo, when the Aatrox dies, his Darkened Blade is going to get past the Yasuo, give him a bunch of HP, give him a bunch of Omnivamp. Uh, so that's a really powerful combo that I like to go for. Of course, you can just play like a generic Senna or like a Scion. Those are just good units in general that you can fit on your board. A couple other notes is that if you have an Ionia emblem, it doesn't necessarily have to be Kaisa. One unit you can put it on is Kalista. This is especially good if you can get to like a Kalista 3. Kalista really just wants attack speed items like Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker, Rage Blade, Rapid Fire Cannon, Jewel Gauntlet, Infinity Edge, Hand of Justice are going to be your best. Uh, so a lot of times you'll go something like Hand of Justice, Jewel Gauntlet. This is a pretty good Kalista build, especially if you can 3-star her. Uh, she's a really good carry. Kalista 2 with Ionia Spats definitely going to be better than Kaisa 1. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you don't think you can hit Kaisa, Kalista is a very good substitute. And then if you can get to 3-star Kalista, that's definitely a win condition. Of course, if you can get into the late game, and especially like 2-star and Ari, putting any AP items on her is going to be fine. She loves mana items, so blue buff is going to be her best. Uh, but just any generic AP items are going to be fine on your Ari as well, uh, just to enable you to scale into the late game. One other way you can really cap out your board super high is instead of having an Ionia Emblem on your Kalista, is you actually put it on a Belveth. 
Uh, so here you would probably drop this and then you would simply just play the four challenger like before. Uh, if you can get to Belveth 2, this is extremely powerful. Uh, you can just do Ionia plus 2. I really like to have a healing item on the Belveth though. So something like a Bloodthirst or a Hand of Justice. Rapid Fire Cannon's really good on her. Uh, but just any AD items are fine as well. So something like this, if you can get to Belveth 2, is in fantastic win condition. A lot of times you'll just win the game outright if you can get to a Belveth 2 with an Ionia emblem. One other variation is instead of running Belveth, you can actually run Aphilios. Uh, the reason Aphilios is pretty nice on this board is it's easy to just fit in Jin as a final unit. And Aphilios, you want to be going Ionia and then usually like a Last Whisper and then usually plus one, something like a Deathblade. A build like this is really good for Aphilios in this composition. It's a bit worse after Aphilios got nerfed, but should still be pretty solid. Uh, so this is another variation you can play if you're playing into this Ionia board. Ionia Emblem is really good simply due to the fact that your board just fits really cleanly on level 7, right? If I'm playing the Ionia Kaisa version, this can simply just be my level 7 board right here. Uh, this is quite an easy board to hit, pretty cheap to hit too. Uh, so allows you to stabilize really strong, which is part of what makes this composition so good. In terms of the best augments for this composition, you're typically going to want to want stuff that enables Yasuo and Kai'Sa to sustain themselves. So stuff like Healing Orbs and Cybernetic Leech is really good combat caster as well. Enables the same idea, stuff like Transfusion as well. Just enables them to sustain themselves, and that's generally going to be your best option. Of course, augments that give you flat stats is also quite good due to the fact that Challenger isn't really giving you any AD or AP. So stuff like Social Distancing, tons of stats, gifts from the Fallen, are also really strong in this composition. In terms of the best legends for this composition, I think Ezreal and Orn are good. Again, you want to be itemizing these three units right here, Shen, Yasuo, Kaisa, so it's going to enable you to itemize those pretty quickly. In addition to that, I think Vladimir is actually quite good for this composition. I think that Transfusion is really good because you somewhat lack on Frontline, and then Battle Ready is also quite good because you're, all your units are going to be taking damage and dealing damage. So it's quite strong in this composition as well. Final Ascension's also pretty good, but the Silver and Gold Ascension's aren't fantastic in this board, just due to the fact that fights are over relatively quickly. Uh, so those are just the best legends for this board. Next, I'd like to talk about a 6 Challenger Yasuo plus Kai'Sa. This is another strong variation, and it's pretty similar to the Ionia Kai'Sa plus Yasuo board that I talked about earlier. Uh, so I'm not really going to discuss the itemization and augments here because I talked about it there, so just go check out that section if you want to see that. Uh, this is just another strong variation, though, that you can play, but I have it as a different comp because I do think enough of the units are different. Um, again, you're playing around Yasuo plus Kai'Sa dual carry with Shen as your tank, and the idea here is you simply just play 6 Challenger, allows you to just do a lot of damage up front and steamroll through the opposing team. This is really good if you have a Challenger Emblem. If you have a Challenger Emblem, just drop the Samira, uh, and then you can a lot of times just go into an Aatrox like this. Uh, so play a board like this, Challenger Emblem will typically go on your Gwen. You can eventually throw any spare AP items or healing items on your Gwen as well, and just play a board like this. Uh, this is good to flex into if you have a Challenger Emblem, or you just happen to hit 6 Challenger really early and want to play this board. It's definitely a strong variation. Again, the best legends for this are going to be Ezreal and Orn, simply due to the fact that you have multiple carries you want. And then Vladimir is also good because Transfusion and Battle Ready are just good in a board like this. This board, again, wants to be rolling on level 7, level 8. Level 7 a lot of times just because Yasuo and Kai'Sa are super contested. You want to hit them pretty quickly, uh, but then you want to go level 8 once you're stable. This board runs Gwen here for the Shadow Isles. She also gives a bunch of free frontline. She isn't necessary for this board. You could theoretically drop the Gwen for something else. Like, for instance, if we don't have the Challenger Emblem and we're running the Samira like so, you could drop the Gwen for the Aatrox. That's completely fine. I have a Gwen's a bit easier to hit than Aatrox here, so that's why I have her on the board like so. The next composition I'd like to talk about is going to be Darius plus Katarina Reroll. This is a really strong composition because it just has a really strong mid game with Darius 2, Katarina 2, and then has a strong late game with Darius 3, Katarina 3. Uh, whenever you play this composition, you're first going to want to roll a good bit at 3, 2, level 6. You want to have a strong board during stage 3 because you want to guarantee that you get Noxus stacks, and then you're going to want to go to level 7 and slow roll at level 7 until you have Darius 3 and Katarina 3. The idea of this composition here is we're going to be running 6 Noxus plus this Warwick right here to buff up the Darius and give him Juggernaut. Another thing you can do is you can run Zed instead of the Juggernaut as well. Uh, so Zed is a good slot in right here. Uh, enables you to have Rogue on Katarina, but Rogue on Katarina is pretty inconsistent because she a lot of times like procs it and then ults and then like ults back onto the front line. It's really weird. Uh, so I usually prefer just to go for the Juggernaut here instead. Of course, if you have a Noxus plus one, you can play both. Uh, but the typical level 8 that you're going to be going for is you're going to be playing either Jarvan or Azir for the strategist, just give you a lot of frontline shields. And then another variation you can do is you can put your Noxus spat on your Azir and just drop this Cassiopeia like this. And this is a strong board you can play. You can even throw spare AP items on your Azir. Of course, if you don't have Scion yet, just play any random Noxus unit for the 6 Noxus. In terms of atomization, Darius wants healing plus 2. 
Uh, so Bloodthirster is going to be the best. You really want to have a Bloodthirster on him. I think if you don't have a Bloodthirster, it's okay to go for Double Hand of Justice instead. Uh, but you either need one Bloodthirster or two Hand of Justice. You can even go Bloodthirster plus Hand of Justice. That's a viable way as well. Uh, the plus two Titans is really good. Infinity Edge is really good. Deathblade is okay. Hand of Justice is good as well. In terms of Katarina items, she's going to want a healing item plus two. She can use Gunblade, Bloodthirster, or Hand of Justice as her healing item. And then the good plus twos are going to be another Hand of Justice, a Titans, a Deathcap, a Spark, a Jeweled Gauntlet. Uh, those are going to be her good items as well. Giant Slayer, Guardbreaker are fine as well on her. If you have spare tank items, you would ideally throw them on the Scion right here. But of course, if you don't have the Scion, I would probably just throw them on the Warwick right here. Uh, simply just to buff him up as well. Again, one other variation you can do is potentially reroll the Zed alongside the Katarina and throw a Noxus Spat on the Zed if you have a Noxus Spat. And then you go for Zed 3 and start throwing your spare AD items on him. Uh, this is a viable variation as well because it gives you the Slayer and the Rogue. In terms of the best augments for this composition, of course the Noxus Plus ones are going to be really good. It enables you to drop like Cassiopeia or a Samira, which just makes your board a lot stronger. Total Domination got nerfed this patch, but it's still very, very good. Just being able to execute targets is really good, especially for Darius, just due to the fact that Darius likes to execute through units. Uh, again, one note that I forgot to mention is that I like to have Darius and Katarina on the front row here. You actually want them to take a bit of damage. If they have a healing item, they're going to be able to heal back off the damage, and they want to be taking a bit of damage as well. Just that way they can get their mana pools up. What you don't want to have happen is your Darius is the last unit alive. Uh, and is just sitting there trying to 1v8 the enemy team. You kind of want him to be as a pseudo tank here because he'll take damage and heal it back up, which is really good. In terms of other good augments, augments that give your team damage are really good as well. I really like Jeweled Lotus. That way I don't have to run Infinity Edge on Darius or Jewel Gauntlet on my Katarina. Just any generic damage augments are going to be really good because Darius is super thresholdy. You want to make sure that your Darius is getting those executes really quickly. Uh, if he's not getting those executes, of course, you might have a bad time. I think Juggernaut plus one is pretty good as well. Uh, it's pretty easy to slot in for Juggernaut if you have a Juggernaut plus one. Uh, so you throw in like a set right here, and then maybe you throw in a Noxus unit instead. Uh, so a board like this, you know, could be played at level eight if you have a Juggernaut plus one. Um, and then, of course, you can mix and match something else at level seven uh, if you don't have the Juggernaut plus one, right? Uh, sorry, if you have the Juggernaut plus one, you can play something like this and then play a Zed instead, maybe at level seven. Um, or you could even play like Strategist at level 7 if you have Juggernaut plus 1. Uh, so pretty good to enable Darius to be quite a bit tankier as well. In addition, augments that make your team tankier are also quite good. So stuff like Unified Resistance, uh, Battle Ready, Cybernetic Leech are quite good for this. Just allowing Darius and Katarina face tank things. Uh, it's kind of two sides of the same coin. You have Darius wants to be able to one-shot stuff, but then you also want him to be able to face tank stuff. So just augments that give damage or augments that make you tankier are just going to be really strong. You generally just want to be going for combat augments in this composition and funnel into your Darius Katarina. The next composition I'd like to talk about is going to be Sorcerers. This is typically something I only play if I have a Sorcerer plus one, but if you don't have a Sorcerer plus one, you're just going to want to drop Shen for the sixth Sorcerer. Uh, should be pretty easy. I'll also go for this sometimes if I have a lot of Vel'Kazes and I can go for Vel'Kaz 3. So first I'll talk about Lux and then I'll talk about Vel'Kaz. So the general carry for this composition is going to be Lux. Uh, you're going to want to go two items on Lux with the Radiant as the third item from Demacia with tank items on the Jarvan. And I typically like to put my Sorcerer Emblem on my Sona. You can put spare AP items on your Vel'Koz or an Ari if you manage to hit it. Uh, Lux itemization, I think Gunblade plus Jewel Gauntlet's really good. I also think Shodan's really good. Those are her, definitely her three best items. In addition to that though, Giant Slayer's really good. Guard Breaker's really good. And Blue F is really good as well. So those are all good options for your Lux. Jarvan, I like to have a spark on him, plus two tank items. Vow is his best. Warmongs is really good as well. Stoneplate's good. Bramble and Dragon's Claw are solid options as well. Uh, so those are good. And then you can just throw any like spare AP items, like a Shoujin, you know, maybe like a Jewel Gauntlet or something on your Vel'Koz, and it should be strong. If you have a Sorcerer Spat on your Sona, you can, of course, throw items on her too. That being said, she did just get nerfed, so I do like itemizing her a bit less after the nerfs. One thing to note, of course, if you can manage to three-star Vel'Koz, three-star Vel'Koz is a lot better than Lux 2. So prioritize items on the Vel'Koz and then just throw whatever you have left on the Lux. Uh, typically what you want to be doing is putting your carry next to the Sona, that way she can attack speed buff them. So if Lux is your primary carry, put her next to Sona. Vel'Koz is your primary carry, put him next to Sona as well. So yeah, this is just typically your general board. You generally want to roll a bit on level 7 stabilized, then go level 8, play a board like so. Again, of course, unless you're sitting on a bunch of Vel'Koz, then you want to stay level 7 until you hit Vel'Koz 3. Uh, one other thing you can do is that if you don't hit the Ari and you're sitting here on a Malzahar, you can actually play Cassidy over Shen and just get a bit more frontline with the Void. 
That being said, Ari is just a significantly better unit than Malzahar. She just does a lot more damage. She has the Mana Reef. So at that point, you typically want to be dropping the Malzahar for a better unit like the Shen right here. If you manage to make it to level 9, of course, you can put in a Rise for Invoker. In terms of the best augments for this composition, uh, Sorcerer plus 1 is just going to be really strong. Generic AP augments such as Jeweled Lotus are just really strong as well. And Nibble your board to just do as much damage as possible. Uh, just damage augments in general are really good. This comp really thrives on being able to one-shot the enemy board. You just want to kill them before they kill you, especially because you want to be making sure that you're getting kills. That way you proc the sorcerer effect where every time you get a kill, it does damage to a nearby enemy. Uh, so you just want to make sure that you have enough damage to burst through. My favorite legend for sorcerers is going to be Vegar. I think being able to get Jeweled Lotus guaranteed is just really powerful for this composition. Uh, you have a bunch of flat AP already, so Jeweled Lotus is just one of the best augments enabled you to do more damage. It means that you don't have to go for Jeweled Gauntlet on your carries. Also allows you to go Guard Breaker or Hand of Justice on them. Makes those items more valuable whenever you have the Jeweled Lotus. So I highly recommend Vegar if you're trying to play into Sorcerers. Next composition I'd like to talk about is going to be Rek'Sai Reroll. This is a pretty powerful composition. Rek'Sai 3 is a really strong unit. So if you can manage to get to a 3-star Rek'Sai, she can burn through a lot of teams. Uh, this is due to the fact that a lot of units don't really have the burst to be able to get through Rek'Sai. And so she can just get a kill, heal up a ton of HP every time she gets a kill, and just kind of slowly whittle down a team that doesn't really have the burst damage to deal with her. Uh, in terms of the idea of this board here is you ideally want to be playing around 6 Bruiser. Uh, so if you can manage to get to a Cyan, this is going to be the best. Bruiser plus 1 is also fantastic for this comp because you can very easily fit in 6 Bruiser without the Cyan. Of course, if you don't have a Bruiser plus 1 and you don't have a Cyan, uh, what people tend to like to do is they like to put in either 6 Void or they like to put in a Challenger here. So one variation you can do is you can simply just put in like a Kalista or a Yasuo over like this uh, to buff up your Kai'Sa. And then you could even drop to four Brawler and then just play like an Ash for the three Freljord. Uh, another variation you can do if you don't have the Brawler plus one and don't have a Scion is simply just go into some sort of six void composition like so. And this should be able to fit pretty easily. You can play a board like this and should be good. Just with the four Bruiser six void, it fits pretty easily on level eight. Um, that being said, when you're playing this composition, you generally want to be rolling on level seven. So if you have a Brawler plus one, you just fit in six Brawler at level seven. If you don't have the Brawler plus one, you probably just fit in a board like so at level seven right here. Of course, you could also just play four Brawler plus the Lissandra and the Challenger, like I showed earlier. Uh, in terms of itemization, you really want healing on the Rek'Sai. side. Bloodthirst is going to be by far her best item. Uh, and then Titans is also really good. Hand of Justice and Infinity Edge are good items as well, but you really want one Bloodthirst or one Titans plus one. That plus one, again, could be Hand of Justice, Bloodthirst, or Titans, Infinity Edge. Tank items generally are going to be going on Sejuani in this board, and then you want to be throwing your spare AP items on Kai'Sa. Rek'Sai does have troubles cleaning up a lot of units just due to the fact that she's single target and kind of slow, so Kai'Sa enables you to clean up stuff really easily because she's a really good unit at cleaning things up. In terms of best Kai'Sa items, just any AP items are going to be good. Shoujin, Rallo, Archangel's Deathcap, Giant, Slayer, Hand of Justice, Gunblade uh, are all solid options, so keep that in mind. And yeah, you generally just want to go to level 7, slow roll until you have Rek'Sai 3. This board does need Rek'Sai 3 to win fights late game, so don't try and push to level 8 without the Rek'Sai 3. Once you get to Rek'Sai 3, though, you can start pushing levels. If you have a Void plus 1, you can highly consider playing 8 Void at level 8 if you can get to Belveth uh, and play, you know, the Baron Nasher, drop out of the excess Brawlers. Uh, but usually you want to be playing around Bruisers. Generally, just Bruiser buffs up the Rek'Sai better than the Void does. Uh, but this Void board here is good in the mid game if you don't have the Scion. In terms of good augments for this composition, augments that make you tankier are going to be really good. So stuff like Bruiser Plus One is going to be fantastic. I think Transfusion is really good as well. In addition, Ascension is quite good for this too, just because the fights tend to last pretty long because Rek'Sai is pretty tanky. Uh, so that is another option as well. In terms of the best legends for this composition, I think Vladimir is probably the best one. This is just due to the fact that Transfusion is going to scale with the Bruiser really well, makes Rek'Sai super tanky. In addition to that, Rek'Sai really likes Ascension. And then it actually turns out uh, that Battle Ready is also really good for this composition too. You can just run all three, and you know it's just a generically good option to take all three Vlad augments. Uh, and it's gonna all three of them are going to buff up the Rek'Sai individually and together really well. Next comp I'd like to talk about is the best comp in the game if you have the Double Trouble augment. Uh, and this is going to be Talia. Now, the idea of this composition is that Talia really loves Double Trouble due to the fact that both Talias are going to proc her passive on both Talia's ultimates. So whenever your first Talia ults, your second Talia is going to do damage on that ult and vice versa. So it just works really well with Double Trouble. 
Uh, this comp here, we want to be running sets as our frontline along with Talia. This is because every time set ults, again, Talia is going to proc her passive, throw a boulder at the enemy, do damage to them. Uh, so you run double set, double Talia, and then you just fill out Teemo and Swain for the synergies like so. This also means that two healthy is also very, very powerful in this composition. So this is definitely another composition that you can consider playing two healthy with. Uh, it's probably the best one. This and like Kled reroll are really good with two healthy. Uh, in terms of itemization here, you just want to throw AP or mana items on your Talias, Shojin, Blue Buff, Death Cap, Jewel Gauntlet, Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker, Gunblade are just good. And you want to be throwing whatever tank items you have on your set uh, just to enable him to stay alive longer, get more ults off, which actually ultimately is more damage. Uh, whenever you hit this board, you want to be staying at level 6, rolling for this. You want Talia 3 set 3. Once you have Talia 3 set 3, you can then push levels to level 8 and just put in 4 Multicaster, so you can just get in Sona and Vel'Koz. Uh, you want this 4 Multicaster here because it's going to enable more Talia ults, which is going to be more passive procs, going to be more damage, more CC. Just really powerful. Uh, you just end up doing a lot of damage and blowing through enemy teams if you can get to a board right here. In addition to 2 healthy and double trouble, just any augment that gives you AP is going to be strong in this composition. Allow your Talias to just blow through stuff really quickly. In terms of the best legends for this composition, I think Poro is probably the best. Uh, just due to the fact that the two best augments for this, Double Trouble and Too Healthy, are not Legend augments. That being said, if you did have to go with a Legend, I would probably say Vagar. Uh, just due to the fact that you'd be able to take Jeweled Lotus, and it's going to enable your Talias to do a lot more damage. But again, you really only should be playing this composition if you have the Double Trouble augment. Uh, so Legend is a bit weird to talk about because you're not playing this off of a Legend augment. The next composition I'd like to talk about is going to be Kled Reroll. This composition is really strong if you can get to Kled 4-star. He kind of just starts deleting teams, and he's really tanky himself. This scales quite well into the late game if you can manage to hit the board. Now, this board's a little weird because there's a lot of different options you can go for with this. The core of your build, really, is just going to be Kled, Zed, and then Katarina. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fill out 3 Yordle, 3 Noxus, and have 3 3-star three units. Typically, you're going to be going for Kled 3, Zed 3, so that's going to be two of them right there. Uh, but you're going to need to fill out two Yordle units. Those can be anything. Of course, late game Heimerdinger is going to be the best, but you know, you're not going to have Heimerdinger at level 6 when you're going to be slow rolling for your Kled and your Zed. Uh, so you really just want to go for whatever Yordles you can find. Something like a Teemo and a Poppy are generally going to be what you're doing. Then you want to be filling out another Noxus unit here. So this can be Swain, this can be Samira, this can be Cassiopeia. Whichever of them you're closest to 3-starring is the one you should be going for because that's going to enable you to just be able to get your 3 Yordle with the 3 3 stars and have a board like this. And then this is going to, of course, give you Kled 3. Another one you can go for, you're sitting on a lot of Kales, can go for Kale 3, gives you Slayer. You want to be playing as many Slayers as possible, uh, and so you could potentially have Kale 3 as your other 3 star uh, to buff up the Kled, and then something like this. And then again, you just want to be putting in as many Slayers as possible, uh, so Gwen is just really good to put in. And that's how you end up with a board something like this here. We're just putting in as many Slayers as possible and trying to 3-star three, three of our units. In terms of itemization, Kled really wants a healing item. Bloodthirster is going to be the best. And then he wants plus 2. Quicksilver is really strong. Titans is really strong. I think Last Whisper is pretty good as well. Infinity Edge is fine as well. And then you want to be throwing whatever spare items you have on Zed. Zed wants a healing item. Bloodthirster is the best. Plus 2. Again, Titans and Quicksilver are probably his best ones. But Infinity Edge, Deathblade... Uh, good options as well. You could even go something like a Double Titans. Should be fine. Hand of Justice is also fine. And then any spare AP items are going to be going on your Katarina. You can go Zeke's in this build as well, but with the nerf of Zeke's, it's not the greatest. Uh, but it is definitely viable on this board. Again, you want to be rolling at level 6 for the Kled 3, plus the Z3, plus one other 3-star. And then once you hit that, you're going to want to push levels, put in as many Slayer units as possible. In terms of the best legend for this composition, Twisted Fate is really good because it's going to enable you to get good clad items and good Zed items. Their itemization is a little bit specific, uh, so Twisted Fate allows for that pretty well. So I do definitely recommend Twisted Fate for this build. In addition, augments, healing augments are going to be really good. Kled just wants to be able to sustain through stuff. So stuff like Idealism, Cybernetic Leech, Harm Assist are all good as well. In addition, Gargantuan Resolve is quite good. It gives you a Titans uh, that you can put on your Kled. Uh, and buffs it up, so that's a good option as well. The next composition I like to talk about is another Ionia variant. This is going to be Karma plus Yasuo as a duo carry. The idea of this composition is you're going to play it if you have a Karma in the mid game that you're carrying with AP items, and you want to just keep her into the late game. Ionia is going to give her a lot more damage. I actually prefer this version to the 6 Invoker version. 6 Invoker Karma reroll is definitely a viable composition, but I actually like this version a bit better. Uh, so you're going to be prioritizing Karma items here, and then going for Yasuo items after. Uh, in terms of the build here, you're just going to be going for 6 Ionia, and then I just have it filled out Tarek and Jarvan from our frontline to give Karma more time to kill stuff. 
One other nice thing about this board is that if you manage to like, get to level 8 and hit an RE2, you can simply just transfer the Karma items over to the RE if you don't have a Karma 3. In terms of playing this composition, you'll either stay level 7 or push level 8. You'll typically stay level 7 for Karma 3 if you have like a lot of Karmas. If you're sitting here on 6-7 Karmas, you may want to just stay level 7 and get Karma 3. Otherwise, you can push to level 8 and go for a Yasuo 2, Karma 2, and play a board like so. Maybe even get your Karma 3 at level 8. In terms of itemization, Karma wants your AP items. I think blue buff is really good in this build. Shojin's good as well. Uh, in addition to that, Death Cap, Jewel Gauntlet, Giant Slayer, Guardbreaker, Gunblade are all strong options. Archangels is decent as well. Then you want to be prioritizing Yasuo items. Again, Yasuo really likes a healing item, so either Bloodthirst or Hand of Justice, plus two. Infinity Edge, Deathblade, Edge of Night, Titans, Quicksilver are all good options. And then you're going to want to be putting your tank items on your Shen. In a board like this, I highly recommend getting a Spark on your Shen right here to buff up your Karma's damage as much as possible. And then you can throw any spare AP items on your Ari. In terms of the best augments for this composition, uh, the augments that I talked about in the Ionia comp are going to be good for Yasuo. You know, they're going to buff up the Yasuo, stuff like Cybernetic Leech, Combat Caster is going to be really good for him. Uh, in addition, AP augments are also pretty solid for your Karma. Stuff like Jeweled Lotus is going to be really good. It means you can not run Jeweled Gauntlet on your Karma, not run Infinity Edge on your Yasuo. So I do really like Jeweled Lotus for this composition right here. In terms of the best legend for this composition, I think that Vladimir is going to be really good. Uh, this is just due to the fact that Karma and Yasuo both enjoy Vladimir's augments. They both really enjoy Transfusion and Battle Ready. Uh, another thing you can go is also Ezreal or Orn. Again, you have three units you want to be itemizing here. You can even throw spare items on your Ari. So that's definitely a viable option, but I do think Vladimir is probably your best option for this comp. Of course, Ionia plus one is also good for this board. If you have Ionia plus one, you can drop set for a legendary or whatever you would like to. I don't think in this board you generally should be going for something like four invoker. That being said, if the Rise is very good, you can definitely put Rise on your board and maybe go for 4 Invoker that way. So drop like Jar of an Enteric, or if you have an Ionia plus 1, you could drop the set, play Rise, uh, and drop one of them. But that would be on only one of the really good Rises. So something like a Shadow Isles Rise or a Freljord Rise is going to be really good. You probably don't want to be doing it on some random Rise. Uh, going 4 Invoker on like Mandel City Rise is also pretty good as well. Uh, but for a lot of the other Rises, it wouldn't be worth it sacking the Frontline. The final comp I'd like to talk about today is going to be Shadow Isles Gwen. Now this composition is really good if you have a Shadow Isles plus one or you hit a center real quickly. The reasoning for that is just that Viego is not that great of a unit to be running, so you don't want to be running him. So you either want the Shadow Isles plus one or you want a Senna. Of course you can play like four Shadow Isles without either of those as like a transition comp. And if you have a Shadow Isles plus one, you can play Viego on this board as a transition, but you generally want to be getting out of that unit because he's not very good. In terms of the board here, we're going to want to first be prioritizing our Gwen items, then our Kaisa and Shen items. And then if you have a Rage Blade, you can feel free to throw it on your Kalista. The idea of this board here is just four Challenger, four Shadow Isles, and we're carrying Gwen and Kaisa. In terms of Gwen itemization, she wants a healing item, sometimes two, and then some damage. I like Hand of Justice, I think it's the best, but Gunblade and Bloodthirster are both acceptable as well. I think Titans is really good on her, Spark is really good on her, Deathcap is really good on her, Jewel Gauntlet's fine. In Giant Slayer's fine, Guard Breaker's fine as well. Something like Double Hand of Justice Titans or Double Titans Gunblade or something like that is probably going to be one of her best builds. In terms of Kaisa itemization, if you don't have a Spark on your Gwen, I really like Shiv on your Kaisa for this board. She really wants a healing item, either Gunblade or Hand of Justice, and then she wants some damage. So Death Caps are really good, Giant Slayer's good, Guard Breaker's good. Joe Gauntlet's fine, Shojin's okay, although I don't love it with 4 Challenger. Archangel's actually pretty solid in this comp because you have a good amount of stall with the 4 Shadow Isles. And then Shen we want to be running as our tank. Goes well with Valkai, they're both Bastion units, so you can throw whatever tank items you have on your Shen in this board right here. And then Callista can use spare items. If you manage to go for like a Callista 3, you can start throwing other items on her as well. Something like a Hand of Justice, Jewel Gauntlet are really good, Guardbreaker Giant, Slayer, Rapid Fire Cannon, all good options on your Callista. Uh, but I would only go for three items on Callista if you have like a Callista 3. Otherwise, I would just go for just a single Rage Blade and let your Gwen and Kaisa do the heavy lifting for this composition. If you have a Shadow Isles plus one, you're going to drop Maokai for whatever you'd like to. Uh, the easiest one would be Cassante, just because that's a Bastion unit right here. Um, so that's one thing you can do. If you make it to level nine, what I like to do is simply just play Aatrox, and then you can actually drop Irelia for the Warwick. Uh, just to give the two Juggernaut. Of course, if you're sitting here and you have items on your Yasuo, because you can throw spare AD items on your Yasuo, you may want to keep the three Ionia, so you may still just keep the Irelia in this case. Um, but the Aatrox is typically just going to be your best level nine, going to give Slayer with your Gwen. Slayer is a little weird. Uh, Gwen doesn't necessarily like need Slayer as long as she has healing, and even with Slayer, it's not enough healing on its own, so you generally want to have some other healing source. 
Uh, so Slayer is a good thing to throw in, but isn't necessary. The board is a little awkward to fit in Slayer at level 8. Um, but if you hit an early Aatrox, you can try and slot it in. Of course, if you have a Shadow Isles plus 1, you can simply just drop the Maokai and play Aatrox like so, and have a board like this with the 4 Shadow Isles, uh, and should fit quite nicely. In terms of the best legend for this composition, I think the best ones are going to be Ezreal and Orn, just because you have multiple carries, allows you to deck them out with the items they want. In addition, I think Vagar is quite good, buffs up the damage of Kai'Sa and Gwen quite a bit, uh, especially because they don't have a bunch of other flat AP sources. Something like Tiny Power is going to be really good in this composition, uh, so I really like him to buff them up. In addition, in terms of best, of course, Shadow Isles plus one is really good. Uh, generic augments that give a bunch of damages are going to be really good, so stuff like Social Distancing. Again, we don't really have any other damage sources, so stuff like Social Distancing, Magic Wand are going to be strong. Healing augments like Cybernetic Leech allows Gwen, Kai'Sa, and Yasuo to live a lot longer. Combat Caster is also quite good. Yasuo, Gwen, and Kai'Sa really like that as well. If you made it to the end, I want to thank you for watching. As I said earlier, I will be releasing a video within 24 hours covering the best legends and how to play them in depth in the current patch. So make sure to subscribe if that's something you're interested and something you want to see. And thank you for watching.